Okay, so this is the second of three videos. It goes into how you might implement a blackjack game. Now, the components you'll need are the deck class, the hand class, and the card class. So, how does this all work? Well, first you have a deck. Then you set each player to be equal to some hand. So each hand object is effectively your player. In quotes. Now, we also need a scanner to process input. Blackjack is much more reliant on input than, say, a high card game. So, how do we do this? Well, first, every time through the game, we're going to shuffle the deck. Then, we're going to draw a card for the dealer, and then another, and then a card for the player and then another. So two cards for the dealer, two cards for the player. Um, and I'll leave you to decide how you would implement more than one extra player. Now, at first the dealer's cards aren't revealed. This is the game loop. This is going to be a sort of round loop. Um, and the round loop is going to say, okay, well, you're going to be able to hit until you bust, and then if you don't hit anymore, we compare cards and then we're done. So it's relatively small actually, um, but there's a little bit of complexity here. So first, I'm printing out the player's hand and the value so they know how it works, and I'll go into get hand value later. Uh, that's a method you're going to have to write. Um, then I'm going to ask, oh, hit? And what I'm checking for is the word hit. Now, you probably want to choose something slightly better. Um, but I'm saying if the input is equal to, without capitals and lowercase is considered, the word hit, um, then what do we do? Well, we add a card. Then we check the value. If the value is greater than 21, they bust. And then we have to break out of this loop And uh, actually, there is a little logic error here. Um, we want to say uh, if they bust, then um, we want to say that they lost. Okay. And um, that'll break them out of the loop. And otherwise, well, they get to go back through. This continue says jump back to the top of the loop. So the logic so far is print the cards, ask if they want to hit, if they do want to hit, give them an extra card. If they bust, quit out of the loop, but if they don't bust, meaning this if statement doesn't get executed, you continue back to the top of the loop and you skip out on anything else that might be over here. Now, again, this won't get executed, but I'd just like to have this just in case there's something that you want to add down here later, around line 51. Now, if they don't enter hit, immediately we say, okay, compare their card, your card to the dealer's cards, and then if you, it's better, if your hand value is better than it, then you win. And I said better than or equal to, but in a traditional game, you might have to beat them, not just equal them. Um, and then otherwise you lose. And in all cases, I break out of my loop. And this is my hit or stay loop. Then what I'll do is I'll print out the dealer and the dealer's, this prints out the dealer's cards, the player and the player's cards, and the values of each using my get hand value method. After that, well, the round is over, so I'll fold. And in fact, fold, what it does is it, if we look at hand, and this is a, not complete, but what it does is it says, um, no, no, this one's fine. Uh, let's see, fold, fold, fold. Fold says we're going to discard into the deck our hand. So it goes into the discard pile of the deck. Now, oops, wrong file. Now here, this will go into the discard pile of the deck, and it turns out that if we look at deck, what it does when it shuffles, 
it'll shuffle this collection of cards. Um, and if we draw a card and there aren't any cards that left, what it'll do is it'll look at the discard pile and it'll shuffle all those there back into the normal deck. So no matter what, that's taken care of by the uh, deck class. Um, as long as you fold, uh, those cards will eventually be cycled back into the deck. And it'll shuffle the deck when they do. Um, that means it's possible to count cards and things, so enjoy. Um, so then you can say, okay, do you want to play again? We folded our cards. Now do you want to get another hand? Uh, if you don't, and again, equals ignore case, doesn't care if it's capital or lowercase. If they don't, then you say good game, and you this system.exit0 is a shortcut to quitting the program. Um, and otherwise, well, there isn't any other thing I have to say, but it just jumps back to the very top of the loop. Up here. And then it starts the process over again. Shuffles the deck. Uh, it does shuffle, so I guess you can't count cards or anything. Um, then it uh, draws cards for each player. Then it'll go through and ask about hitting. And then at the end, it compares cards and um, says who won. And regardless, this should execute fine. Now, let's look at the get hand value. This is where you determine how many points you have in your uh, deck, in your hand. Um, and I'm going to start out, there are a bunch of unnecessary variables here, but mostly it's for, uh, for clarity. So while we still have cards in our deck, okay, okay, so while we still have cards in our hand, um, I'm going to look at some value here. This value is the value of my hand. I have a total. Um, or the value of my card. Uh, this is a total which holds the value of the uh, hand itself, progressively gets bigger, and an ace counter. And this is pretty important. So while I still have cards in my deck, I want to say, uh, this should not... Okay, yeah, that's fine. This is sort of a weird way to do a loop, but um, while there are cards in the hand, uh, and or while they're while the hand size is bigger than zero, uh, we go through and we say the value of the card is equal to a player dot get card dot get rank. So getting the rank of the card. If the value then the rank is bigger than nine. I'm just going to add 10 to my total because it's a face card or a 10. Otherwise, if it's a 0, then I know I have an ace. And I'm just going to count the aces for now. And then, if the total is equal, uh, then otherwise, if the, to if the uh, value is not an ace or a face card, I just add the value of the card plus 1. Because I was counting from 0, I need to add that value of the card that 2, the value of the card. So a 2, which was represented by a 1, needs to get a 1 added to it to represent a 2 proper in my total. And then I have I++. So what this does is it says, okay, well my hand size is something. I don't want to remove cards from my hand. So instead, while I'm greater than 0, I continue to do this, and each time I increase the value of my i value. Now, really what I should say is, well, i is less than the hand size. Um, but this does the same thing logically. So this counts up, goes through every card at position i, um, and then it'll add that to my total, except for the aces. And the reason is this. If I had two aces, what should each value be? Well, one should be 1, and one should be 11. If I have one ace, well, it could be a 1 or an 11. If I have three aces, well, 
two are going to be one, and then one's going to be 11. So I can't know before. Um, well, I can assign it before, but then I might go over 21. Um, so it really depends on the value of my cards up to that point. And so what I can do is I can say if the total plus 10 plus my ace counter is going to be greater than 21, then I'm not going to count one of the aces as 11, I'll just count all the aces as 1. Otherwise, if my ace counter is bigger than 0, then, uh, oh, there, that has to be there. Oh, oops, and the ace counter is greater than 0, this needs to be cut out. So that ensures that uh, I get some some proper values. So basically I'm saying ace counter is how many aces I have. If I have one ace, well that's 1 plus 10, so the ace would be represented as 11 plus my total. If 11 plus my total is greater than 21 and my ace counter is great, bigger than 0, I just add my ace counter. Um, Otherwise, if my ace counter is greater than, this isn't necessary, but it's good to be explicit here. If my ace counter is greater than zero, meaning if I have aces, I'll add 10 plus my ace counter. So that means I don't have a limit of, uh, I don't exceed my limit if one of my aces is 11. So I have, let's say I have two aces. Well, one of them would be 1 plus 10, or 11, and then I'd still have 1 left over in my ace counter, so that would be 12, a value of 12 for my two aces, if I don't exceed 21 with those two aces, and so on and so forth. And you can try the math out. I highly encourage it for this section. This is the only way you're going to get your aces to work properly. And then I give back the total. So if I look at the method signature, public static int, I get back an integer, get hand value, I have to pass in a hand. Let's see if I've done that in all of these cases. Get hand value, dealer. Well, dealer is a hand. I pass it in, and I'm comparing it to some number, some other hand value, so they both must be numbers, so I'm getting a number back. And if I run this, you'll see the following output. Eight of hearts, six of clubs, that's my hand. Hand value is 14. Eh, let's say I'll hit. I get an ace. Ah, so my hand value is 15 because 11 would have made me bust. It would have brought me up to 25. So instead, my program says, okay, well, we'll assume it's a one. Do I want to hit again? Uh, no. And so I win. The dealer had a four and a three with a value of seven. And I had an 8, a 6, and an ace with a value of 15. Do I want to play again? Yeah, sure. So it gives me some new hand card, new cards. No, I don't want to hit. Again, I win. The dealer had 6, I had 18. Do I want to play again? Sure. Now notice anything will make me play again except for the word no. So I don't want to hit. I lost, the dealer had 20. And you can add counters for losing and all of that stuff. Do I want to play again? No. And it says good game. And notice my program has terminated. So as you can see, it's pretty complicated. I suggest you go through what you see here very slowly um, and see what you can replicate, what you can change, um, and if you understand it in total. That's a basic blackjack game. Um, and again, there are options for expansion. I encourage you to do those. Good luck.